It's not that long ago that a trillion seemed like one of those made-up numbers, like a jillion or a gazillion. But increasingly we live in a world where a trillion dollars is an actual amount thrown about in the upper echelons of society. For instance, it's less than the value of Apple or Amazon, just a smidgen of the US national debt, and it's only five times more than the net worth of the world's richest person, Amazon's Jeff Bezos. It's likely that we'll be living in a world of trillionaires before we know it. So with that in mind, we thought it appropriate to ask the age-old question, how would you spend it? Well, physicist and journalist Rowan Hooper decided to take up the challenge, turning it into a new book, How to Spend a Trillion Dollars. He spoke to the drums, Ruby Cornish. It started as a, just an idea, like um, that movie Brewster's Millions, where, you know, you have to spend millions of dollars in a short period of time. You have 30 days in which to spend 30 million bucks. It was like that, but writ large. Let's do it with a trillion dollars and see what we could do. <laughs> it's not properly costed out as if I really was going to spend it. It's so I've, I've been quite rough and ready with it. But I've used sources that have calculated it. So, for example, with um, rare species, people, a bu whole bunch of scientists have calculated how much it would cost to get all red list species off the red list and, and, and make them unendangered and unthreatened by extinction. And it costs something like um, $76 billion a year to do that. So I've taken that $76 billion, said, OK, let's take that. And I've put some money towards saving all of these endangered species for 10 years. Uh, and, and, and that's so I'm calculating based on published data. So with healthcare, a trillion dollars isn't enough to um, get everyone's health up around the world. But with some of that money, you could pick a country and introduce universal healthcare in that country. And it would serve as a flagship to others to show, well, this is what it does. It, is, it costs a lot of money to start off with to, to get universal healthcare. But then you see benefits very rapidly and it pays for itself by preventing problems down the line. If you choose a country and, and you'd invest in it to for healthcare, that would be a beacon and a, a flagship country for other ones to follow. The biggest is climate change, and you know I've tackled that in four different ways in four different chapters of the book. Um, you know, trying to speed the transition to a carbon zero economy globally uh, is one chapter, and another one is like what can we do about drawing down the carbon that we've already put into the atmosphere? Um, how can we get rid of the, the carbon that's up there already? If you give it all away to everyone, you don't get much. So then I thought, well, what if you only give it to the, the very poorest people? And if you give it to the very poorest people in the world, everyone would, those people would get about $1,300 in a lump sum. Um, and that's actually a hugely significant amount if you're on only earning, you know, $1.50 a day. Um, it's a life-changing sum. And there's been a lot of work showing what that does if you give people a, a, a that sort of money. Um, and, and it poses a real conundrum, actually, because um, it seems like that's the morally correct thing to do, just give it away and let people decide what to do with it. There's a lot of arguments to be made for just doing that. Oh, I'm buying! So much is possible with actually not much of the money that's going out there. And that, that's the really counterintuitive thing about it. It's like a trillion dollars is more than we will ever have our hands on by a long way. Um, and more than any government will have to spend on a project. But in the grand scheme of things, it, it is all out there. Hey, big vendor. Hey, big so I do vendor. hope that we will, there will be a sort of more of a groundswell of people getting together and putting pressure on governments and, and billionaires to spend more wisely and directly. Rowan Hooper, and you can't help but think that this guy has been locked down in the UK, Rick, <laughs> with a scientific calculator for way too long. If you had a trillion dollars, what would you do with it? Very short on time. Would you go yes. for impact? Um, look, I would I would try and fix climate change. Um, I, I, I do totally agree with that concept, give the money to the poor if, you, if the, it's the morally right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But we do need the planet. Um, and, you know, maybe we could do something revolutionary and get countries and governments to do some of that. Um, but if they're not acting... Uh, as they are not here, then we might as well do it for ourselves. Uh, does anyone have a trillion dollars? <laughs> I do. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Where did you get money from? <laughs> this this is a trillion dollars. It's literally a trillion dollars. Is that Zimbabwean? It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth just, un just under half a cent. <laughs>
<laughs> Hell yeah, money is not real, is it? <laughs> but, but Toby, you do know plenty of stinky rich people. I do. <laughs> I do. What do you think they should do with their coin? Give it to me. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> the, uh, look, I, 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 fundamentally, the, the world's not running out of problems, right? You know, human trafficking, genocides, cancer, climate change. There are thousands of these things. What do you address if you, if you can fix one big thing? And I think that divides into do you want quality or do you want quantity of life? I think you have to address quality of life, which is things like freedom of choice, access to food, access to shelter, um, right to assembly and all those things over duration of life or even uh, longevity of the species, which is climate change and so on. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's better to fix, to, to have a, a good life rather than a long life. All right. And that's, that's where I'd pump, pump, the, pump the cash. Where would you pump the cash, Christina, just quickly? Well, Mars. Uh, no, I wouldn't send it to Mars. Um, but this week we've had three missions to Mars and today, of course, the Perseverance landed. Whoa, big stuff. What that leads me to is culture change. Are we going to go out into the universe as battling tribes as we are at the moment or are we going to be a united species? I'd like to see some commitment to actually pu pulling us together to culture change humanity mm -hmm. into a better group. Do you and know what, I know what somehow, would do that. You know, Taking we... Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. But, you know, we've got the resources. There's plenty of stuff, food and everything to go around. We're just not working it the right way. Let's shift our culture as a species okay. so that we all pull together. Take 15 seconds. Back to you. The ABC. <laughs> oh! No. <laughs> Please. No, the paperwork alone off that comment. Wow, there's Monday's media diary. The whole point of... Sorry, I'm sorry. You've got um, ten seconds. You know, Kill me. The film Brewster's Millions is about hating money. And I, I don't want to answer this question because, I, honestly, it broke my brain today. I don't have an answer for you because... I don't know if money's right. the solution. I that's don't good. think it works we, we don't, have lack of it. We don't have time to angst over it any further and we don't have it anywhere. That's all we have time for. <laughs>